Hey man, <laughs> uh, this video, I call it how to save a screenshot securely. And I only added this securely here to get four lines in this output. This. Uh, and in this video, we will add a save function to the snap script. Uh, and I have already experimented a bit with this. So now it looks like this. If we bring up the menu, I select the full screen screenshot. We get a preview, I close the preview. We get a new menu here now that we will create in this video. And if we select save, it will, we, it will bring up a prompt here that we can uh, type in, type, and then it creates a file called type here because that was what we entered in our screenshot story here and it also say snap that goes into and the target. And this save function also uh, can create uh, uh, default files with a timestamp if we don't specify file name and it can also create uh, uh, subdirectories if we want that. Now we have this, you know, so that's what we're going to do in this video. Um, I think the easiest way to, to demo this or to show this is to copy what we had in the last video and overwrite my new beautiful script here. Save uh, and we can test the old version. Full screen takes two se seconds because we added that in that test close the preview and then we just get the notification here SXIV closed. So that's where we at uh, now. Let's clean this script up a bit. Can remove this sleep, can remove some notify send here, can remove this notify send and there. Okay so when SXIV is closed I want to display a new menu and we can do it like a quick and dirty here to start with and just copy this uh, action uh, menu thing here into here and then we just add different actions save new re preview wolf and we copy the actions into the case statement Create some default action for them, just uh, adding the action variable to an error message. We also want a default action for this case, we can copy that from the old one here. There. Okay, let's test this. Full screen. Preview, close it, get the menu, select re-preview, we get the error message, error re-preview. So it works. Good. Uh, okay. Save function. We, we wait with this new re-preview and ulf functions till later videos. In this video we will only focus on this save stuff here. So when we select save, uh, we call a function called save snap. That function doesn't exist, so we create it here, save snap function like this, and then we can do an error, uh, just a message, save snap, just to see that this works now. So full screen, close it, select save, and we get a uh, message here, save snap. Great. Um, and save snap, uh, as you could see, when we selected that, we got a, a prompt, not a menu with a list, but, but a menu with a prompt instead, where we could enter a, a file path and stuff. And you can, of course, use i3 menu for, for this as well. And uh, if you paid attention, you could also see that the prompt had the exactly same location as uh, our other menu here, which was intended. If we do this, but we also add a prompt here. Prompt uh, save file like this or like this backslash. Okay, save, test, full screen, close, save. We get save snap, the notification here, but we all, this is the menu now. And as you can see, it's just a blank 
thing here. It's no list, it's no entry box. If I type, nothing happens. So or we, we only get a blank menu. And this is because we are using the include L option here. And that will force the layout to only include the list, which the L stands for. So if we change L here to uh, PE instead, which stands for prompt and entry box. Uh, now we get our prompt here. Great. Um, now we could maybe take uh, a, a deep breath here and look at the script and see that we have a lot of uh, duplication and stuff here. One is this menu positions are uh, currently at three uh, places in the script. Uh, so um, I guess it's a good idea to move those um, to somewhere else. But we don't include the include here and the prompt. We only include this positioning and vertical layout and stuff. We can add that to a variable. Menu position is equal to, and then we, we could create it as a string like this. And this string doesn't need these backslashes here. And then we can replace our uh, menu position options with this menu position uh, uh, this menu position uh, variable. So this will work. And now we can use this instead here for the action menus. And we can use it with our uh, prompt menu as well. There. So we can test this and it, no, it didn't work. Uh, something is wrong. Menu position. Ah, I have misspelled it. Menu position. Position. Now. And there, and as you can see, it displayed the menu anyways, but just with the default layout, which is top uh, right corner and horizontal layout. So that's a good thing with i3 menu, in my opinion, that it, uh, if it cannot display a menu, it displays something, whatever. Okay, good. We have uh, refactored that a bit. Another thing is this action menu par part here, in a way. This part is the same as this part here. We could uh, store this even if it's quite simple in, in an array uh, or in a function, I mean, called action menu, and then assign action to that function, maybe. Yeah, why not? Um, take this, create a function. Action menu and then we replace uh, this is an action menu and then we can write it like this and also this here I don't know, maybe that was a bit overkill, but whatever. No, let's, okay, we are in refactoring mode. Another thing I think we can refactor is this uh, no option selected aborting thing here. That might also look like a stupid thing to, to put this part into a function uh, that we can use, but that's also good if we want to change this string or maybe add some other uh, cleaning up options when we uh, abort the script. It can be good to have this in a cancel function here. Let's put that there and then we can just write cancel, copy this, add it to our default option there. There, good. And I guess we, we should have saved a couple of lines here. We could also create, now we have the action menu, we could create the, the, the a prompt menu as well. But let's not, let's not do that now. Let's store the output of our prompt here, 
in a variable that we can call target. And now I am in the save snap function, and then we can also uh, print the target here to our message. Full screen, close, save, blah, blah, blah. And we get the string here. So now we have this string is the content of the target variable here. And now uh, all we need to do is specify some default uh, directories and, and stuff here. And as you can see, I have been using this uh, Homebud Pix screenshots directory here. And I think uh, this thing is a good thing to, to add as an environment variable. So uh, snap screenshot deed default value home slash pix slash screenshots. There. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing, if you paid attention in the beginning, was that uh, we added a, a, a timestamp to a file. If we didn't specify a file name, we gave it uh, just a, a timestamp as, as the file name. And to do that, we will. Uh, oops, god damn it. Um, sorry. There is a command uh, that's called date. Just printing the date, but you can format this output if you add a plus and then a format string. So uh, I think it's capital Y is that year. Yeah, that's the full year. Then uh, percentage M is month. Percentage D is day. Uh, percentage capital H is hour. Percentage capital M is minute and percentage capital S is seconds, if I'm not mistaken. And man date. Here you can see all, all of these uh, uh, format uh, things you can use. We could also use just capital D and get the thing right away, but whatever. We use this, this is good. And we can save that as well. But this, let's not make a, a environment var variable of this, since this is a variable that will change every time we execute the script here. And now uh, someone might think that, uh, or say that, hey, that's bloat to execute this command every time the script uh, is executed here, the snap script. Uh, because most of the time we will not use this timestamp. This, this is only needed when we save a file without a, f a file name, which uh, is far from every time we execute this snap script. But I just like to have this at the top of the script here, so it's easy to configure it. And this four milliseconds, it's... I, th I think we can afford it, but but I, I, I know, if you want to be really, really, really efficient here, don't uh, put this command at the top. But we do that now anyways, but I'm aware, I'm aware. Uh, 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 save snap. So now we got our default directory here. Uh, we could test it by just printing the default directory and timestamp. See how that looks. Save, super shift C, going, close, save, whatever, and there, now I printed the directory with the timestamp. So this is like the default uh, file, file name. Another detail uh, that I think is a nice detail is that uh, when we uh, opens the prompt here for save file, it was already pre-filled in with the uh, with the default directory here. And that's uh, easy, we can just add the filter option here. Oops. Backslash, save, try this. Whoops, it's a double dollar there. Double dollar, no one wants a double dollar, right? Or maybe sometimes you do. And now we can see we've got our this is weird. These numbers here, I don't know where they are coming from. Ah, that is probably the double dollar. This is the PID of the... Uh, because I forget forgot to save the, the file here. Now we shouldn't get that strange number. Now we only get the, the directory. Another detail. Uh, 
I like to re when you display uh, the home directory, I, I like to replace it with a tilde as much as possible, just to save space. Then we can write longer strings and whatever. Uh, but the the thing is that it can be a bit inconvenient. You have to remember that you uh, replace the tilde and stuff, you, whatever. So replace home, the first occurrence of home, with a literal tilde in the string snap screenshot. And add that as a filter. So now that will be the filter and that is what we want. <clears throat> Next up. Now we need to do some tests here, uh, depending on what we enter in our target uh, uh, variable here. Uh, if said target, this means that we pressed escape during the, the while the menu was open, or if we enter a blank string. If we do, uh, then target is equal to yeah this default thing here the screenshot directory uh, with the file name timestamp. Il if, else if, uh, target is the directory. And here, now we have to uh, yet again convert uh, the, the tilde into the full path, otherwise we, we might get the uh, weird results here. I know this is weird things, but this is just how it is. Target replace literal tilde with the home directory. And that will make this test work. Otherwise it's not sure that this will work. The tilde might not be interpreted as the home directory in this test otherwise. It depends. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But it's much more secure to, to use, you know, the tilde, it's just for us humans to, to make it easier for us to write uh, and read the home directory. And it also makes makes it anonymous, you know, maybe you take a screenshot of your screen, you don't want your username uh, available for everyone, everywhere, you know, all the time. So, if target is a directory, then uh, we haven't specified a file name, and then we, we just append the, the timestamp to the, the specified directory. Target is equal to target slash timestamp. Okay, what are some other scenarios that we can, uh, that could happen here? Another uh, thing we should test for is if it's a file path at all. And it's easy to do so because all paths uh, in Linux and Unix and stuff, they start with a slash. So we can just test if the string uh, starts with a slash like this. If target then equal tilde, this will create a, a, a regular expression test. If the string starts with a forward slash, then this te test is true. Then but that's not what we want to test here, actually. We want to test if it doesn't start with a forward slash. And that means that it is a relative path. Uh, and then we just append the relative path to the default directory here. Do this. I hope you are following here now, but whatever. This is what we do. Uh, and last. If none of these are true, if it's not empty, it's not a directory, and it's not a relative path, then it's an absolute path that's not a directory, meaning it's a, a, a path to a file. And then, uh, then we, we don't actually have to change target at all, then target is target. So there we can end our case clause, and instead here now we... we print target again, because now we should have different things. So, screenshot full screen, close, save, uh, just enter the default here, save snap, and then it's the default with a timestamp, full screen, close, save, subdirectory, deed, partner, then this is the path, and so on. 
it seems to work. The last thing we should do here now is to create uh, uh, before we, because what we what we will do is just move the file, move the temporary file to our target here. But that will only work if the directory uh, for the target exists. So before we do anything else, let's just do a make the uh, p to create any needed subdirectories for uh, target. Uh, and the, only the directory here, and then you can write it like this. And when that is done, then we can just move uh, temp file to target. Uh, and then we want our happy uh, message here, printf percentage s backslash n snap uh, that goes into colon target and yet again we could just to make it nice here we replace the home directory with a tilde so we get a nice message and anonymous message because we are an enemy there there okay save screenshot full screen close save that as just in the screenshots directory here snap that goes into pick screenshots bling 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 should have created the file there looks like it didn't <laughs> that annoys me a bit okay um Why didn't you move the file, man? Ah, that's right, we are in the subdirectory. Here is our new screenshot, so we can test it again. Full screen, close, save, and we can name this. New, 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 new. And we created new, 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 new. That goes into snap. And we can test it with, uh, see if it creates a directory for us. Save. Uh, there, it created the directory. Great! The only thing missing here, if you can call it that, is the file extension, P and G here. Uh, and I, I like to add the file extension here after we have determined uh, uh, the file name and directory. Because then we can use this save snap here for other things as, uh, other than images and stuff as well in the future here. Uh, and just depending different uh, uh, file extensions, but it, it, it whatever. So uh, target is equal to target dot png. So now it should create ping files for us instead. Close there, save dfg dot png. One, one small little minor detail here, but I think it's uh, nice to add it when, when we are here, you know. We save this, or close, save, and then hello.png. This might happen, that you just write the extension by just to, without thinking about it. And then it will create uh, a file called hello png png, because it will always append png here. So what we could do is either test if the um, if the target here ends with PNG, or we could just remove any trailing PNG see if it exists. So if we write this, then it will remove any PNG from target, and then it will append PNG. But if the string doesn't end with PNG, it will not remove anything. So this will this will work. Full screen, close, save. Uh, uh, uh dot png but we still only get the png thing here great i think that's good enough uh, for the save function and it's something that we can reuse maybe we even uh, uh, migrate this function to uh, a separate script because you could use this for saving and moving files uh, uh, in all kinds of ways all, all we need is like what type of file uh, 
the, the source of the file and stuff, whatever. That's uh, out of scope for this video at least. Thank you for watching everybody. Next video we uh, look into the other actions here. New and preview, re-preview. And maybe Ulf. But I think these two, we can squeeze them into one video. But they will be strange. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.